Hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome back to the chess channel. This is Merrick here, back with another daily chess puzzle video. This is day 224, posting chess puzzle every day for you. And so, white just played knight e7 check. Um, black plays king f8, attacking the knight on e7. So now it is white to move. Please pause the video. Uh, right now, comment down below what you think the answer is. Um, put your variation in the comments so um, I can know what you guys are thinking about. And yeah, I'll be back in a couple seconds. So, um, first things first, the first move should be knight c6. We should also consider rook takes c4. However, king takes c7 and rook takes c5 check. Um, although white might have like a little teeny teeny bit of an advantage um, after like something like this, it's it's not too far away from a draw. Um, so yeah, this is just a pretty much drawn endgame. So, um, white wants to play knight c6 instead to fork these two rooks. Um, in this way, we are still attacking the knight on c4, but we also have a, uh, an additional threat of taking either the rook on d8 or the rook on b8. So black plays rook d2 check. Now we have a pretty big decision to make. Um, do we keep, uh, do we move our king to f1, I mean f, f3, g3, uh, f1, g1, or h1? Well, um, so let's divide our decisions into, uh, a couple of categories. Well, on g3, um, this is, I mean, sorry, on either f3 or g3, we will call this the third file category, third rank category, and then on f1, g1, and h1, these are the first rank categories. So we have to really figure out the difference between putting our king on the third rank and putting our king on the first rank before we decide uh, individual squares for the king. Well, um, on the first rank, after we take on on c4, uh, after the rook goes to like a8, we take on c4. Black has rook a2, and uh, black is always threatening some perpetual check idea. For example, um, rook takes e5, rook f2 check. If we keep our king here, black will um, give us perpetual check since we cannot avoid checks. And whenever we step to e1. Black can uh, play rook h2 and threaten mate on h1, which is actually really, really devastating uh, since we have to sacrifice a rook with like rook c2 or something like that to um, not get mated. Even though I think rook c2, we still get mated by this. Uh, but yeah, you get the point. Um, so this is why the first rank is not um, a good option. And this is why we don't play king f1, king g1, or king h1. So we discard all the uh, king moves that are to the first rank. Instead, we uh, decide the difference between uh, king f3 and king g3. Well, king g3, um, let's say rook d3 check, king h4, right? Um, this doesn't look like too bad a position. We're attacking the uh, knight on c4, and we're also attacking the rook on uh, b8, b8. So like, if the rook moves, we just take on c4, and we're just up. Uh, a whole piece. If like rook a3, we can just play rook h1, defending the pawn. But black has um, a pretty good move. Uh, knight d2, um, threatening knight f3 check. If knight takes b8, we play knight. Black plays knight f3 check, king g3. Knight takes e1 check. Um, very important. It's a discovered uh, attack, and king f1, um, knight f3. Um, black is pretty much fine. So. Uh, this is why we don't play king g3, since we get exposed to all sorts of um, forks after rook d3. Instead, we play king f3 after rook d3, and now we play king e4, attacking the rook on d4, and also attacking the knight on c4, and attacking the rook on b8. Um, in this position, there's nothing really black can do to stop us winning one of their pieces, and if black tries to play like rook e8 in this position, we can just take on e4. If rook a3 check, we can play rook e3, and this position is completely winning. So this is why it's very important to look at your alternatives. Um, calculate uh, based on like observations. For example, like uh, when I was calculating the king moves here, uh, king f3, king g3, king f1, king g1, king h1, um, I separated into two categories, the third rank category and the first rank category, and then I found out um, what was the difference between them. And using this, I was quickly able to eliminate King F1, King G1, and King H1 um, pretty easily, since um, I can see why the first rank, moving the king to the first rank, is uh, the wrong ideal. And so why, uh, 
And so this is also why moving the king to the third rank um, is the best idea. And I use the process of elimination by comparing king g3 and king f1 and establishing which one was better. Since king g3 was prone to some forks uh, with knight d2 and knight f3, I was able to deduce that king f3 was the correct answer. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the process and um, my explanation of this puzzle. And I hope to, got, hope to see you guys in the next puzzle uh, in day 225. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.